Nice. Yo, you're in the studio with on Switch, and today I thought we could look at sub bass. I'm gonna make a few sub basses using stock Ableton plugins, and then at the very end we'll make one out of Serum. Uh, you'll see that the, 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 the method for making sub bass is, is the same no matter what synth you've got. Um, it's very simple, very, um, yeah, just a science really. Um, so yeah, we'll do, we'll, do, we'll do a bit of a study on it. We'll make a few different styles of sub bass. I'll show you how easy it is to get to, from like an 808 into like a, just a, a solid, solid sub and vice versa. Um, and we'll go from there, brilliant. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Go down and hit the like button. Go check out the member section. Uh, we're, um, we've got some good things going on over there. They're getting the videos early now. We've got 20% discount on my whole store. And um, yeah, there's a few little other perks that we've got going and we're building together. Um, so yeah, it's real sort of us as a community, you know, which is which I'm loving. So yeah, big up, much love, and let's get on with the video. Okay, so we're in Ableton, and I figured that what we'd do is we'd start off with uh, some of the built-in instruments in Ableton, uh, just so that it's easy to follow along with, people can see exactly what we're doing. And if you're using Ableton, then, then you've already got access to these instruments. And then we'll finish off making a, um, we'll make a sub in Serum. Uh, and that way then, you've then got, you can see the difference, you know? Although it's exactly the same process, however you do it, so. So yeah, anyway, all good. So, <coughs> excuse me. So here we go, we've got analog, analog open. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off oscillator two. Um, I only want the single oscillator for this and I want to also come to the sine wave. So this is the most basic of basic subs. Um, but it is also the, the sub that I used through all of my drum and bass days. Um, I don't know if you can see there in the video, but uh, over here, this is my, this is my Akai S2000, my first ever piece of kit. Um, and that, when I first bought that, you basically, you had a disc that you put in that loaded up the operating system. And with that, uh, you, when you first booted it up, you had the four samples, you had a pulse, you had a saw, you had a square wave, and you had a, a sign. Sure, that was what it was. Um, brilliant, really, really, really cool, really cool. So so yeah, so I just used the, the sub, that was basically it, the sign. I just used the sign wave, uh, and that was the that was the drum and bass, my drum and bass sub. <laughs> Nearly every one of my drum and bass tunes. Anyway, so like I say, this is the basic of most basic uh, subs. Uh, I'm gonna turn the release off of the amplifier envelope. So at the minute, if I play C3, very basic. If I come down to, to say C1, You can hear it's a sub. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, so we can now play with the shape and depending on how the shape is will depend on what kind of sub it is. So what the first thing we need to do is we need to turn the voices down so that it's a mono, so that it's a mono synth. So basically we can only play one note at a time. We don't particularly want two notes happening on a sub. I think it's gonna cause problems with your mix down. And I think in general, <clears throat> it's just gonna cause problems with your mix. Um, so what we'll do is we will now start to have a look at this amplifier envelope. Uh, what I may do, I think I'll do that, is I will process this sub just a little bit first so that we've got a little bit more volume out of it. So we'll go to audio effects, we'll go dynamics and we'll grab a compressor. And we will turn off the side chain and the EQ. Mine's on by default. And we'll now have a little look here. So I, I don't want to squish it too much. But we can do we can do that and then we can use in fact what we can do is we can bring that back off and we can now just grab a utility and we can specify that it's mono and we've then got a gain control here nice nice proper stuff so Depending on how we have the sustain, uh, the sustain level will and the decay will depend on how 808 this this um, this sub is. So if I bring the decay and the sustain all the way down, so our decay is at say 406 milliseconds, our sustain is all the way off. You 
can hear you've got that 808 style thing now. So if we just extend that a little bit, so if we bring the decay out a touch, you've got more of the grimy style. We've got quite a pop at the beginning of that, so we could give it a touch of attack. And you can hear, it's a proper, proper 808 style setup. Really nice. So we could even just leave that there as an 808 sub. Uh, we could grab an EQ. So let's go to the EQ and filters. Let's grab an EQ8 and let's put that after the compressor here. And let's have a little look at the frequencies. So you can see our fundamental here. And let's bring up. And let's bring this gain down a touch for a second. So I'm looking for minus 12, minus 6 sort of style gain really. But let's have a little play here. So we could bring the number two back to here and we could turn up the Q on the number two so that it becomes a, f a much finer point. And we could then just sort of lose a little bit of that very, very low end if we wanted to. Bring that up a little bit. There we go, and we could boost this volume here. Really nice, really cool. So we could even have a look at this filter here and we could have a look at the drive. So if I bring down the filter, it's a sine wave. So we're not gonna have really any noticeable sort of effect on the sound until we get really low with the filter, with the frequency. You see, like we're not we're not really getting anything until we get down to making a difference to the sound in, your, in my headphones. So when we get to like 50 Hertz, so that's fine, but what we can do is we can drive it. So if we drive the filter, we can try something like, we just go through the, the drives here. And we're just adding in like distorted harmonics, not new harmonics, but we're retaining that weight. We try another drive, different type. And we're now starting to become more distorted 080, 8080. The gains come up here, so let's drop the gain a touch here. Nice, so let's try one of the, um, the ASIM ones. Set that. Let's go four where it was. So we've got a little bit of this attack on this filter. As you can see, the filter, the, the, the frequency isn't having a massive effect on that on that 808 at all. Let's try giving it some resonance. So that, for me, isn't very nice. You can start to hear the, the squelchiness with it and that. That is a nice. I think we may have lost some weight there. But. That, for me. Really, really cool. Okay, so basically let, what we'll do is we will duplicate these across to the next MIDI channel. And we've now got a fresh palette to work from. So what we will do is we will turn the drive back to the SIM one, the one that is default on. Uh, we will now come back to the, we'll just double click on the filter frequency. So we're basically just resetting that filter and the drive back to how it is by default. So then we've got a fresh bit to, a fresh sort of, Thing to play with. Let's come to the amplifier envelope 
And let's now bring the sustain all the way up. And this time we're gonna have more of like a solid Reese, uh, not Reese, but a solid sub. You've now got that consistency with that sub. Really cool. So you've then created, you've got two different types of sub there, you know. Um, really cool. So that that's the kind of sub that I would use sort of primarily in a, in a normal sort of everyday sort of situation. Um, the EQ is already done because it's exactly the same sound as it was for the 808 style sub, you know? But um, but you've now got a completely different shape on it. So instead of having that 808, you've now just got a solid, solid sub that will sit underneath everything um, and just fill that space nicely, you know? Remember it's monoed, that's super important. And we've obviously gone a bit, a bit quieter here, but we can obviously, we can gain it up It'll be lovely with some drums. So what have we got so far? We've got an 808 style. Nice. Really nice. And then we've got just the straight sort of style. That's a lovely subline. Wicked. All right, so let's now, let's grab another one. Let's try again. So let's grab this whole section here again and let's duplicate that into the next channel. So we've now got, uh, so we've, we're basically like a flat sub right now. So we've got no pitch bend going on. We've got no, no anything else. Just a standard, bog standard, underneath everything sub. So let's add a little bit of like a, a bit of excitement to it. So let's come to the oscillator here. And with the oscillator here, we've now got things like a, a pitched envelope. So we could, I mean, we could, with the pitch bend, we could now, let's see if we can adjust the amount of pitch bend here. I should imagine it's gonna be under here. Where are we? Pitch bend range. So we could go 12 if we wanted to. There we go. And we've now got. And you can now create those kind of sounds, you know? Nice, so that's cool. But we could also then, we could take another route with it and we could go to this, um, we could go to the oscillator page here and we can have a look at this pitch envelope. So what we can do is we can now bring this up and you can see the pitch envelope initial now is, is at the top here, which is way too much, <laughs> way, way, way too much. And the time, well the time's right for the second. So let's start dropping this until we get something that we like. That's cool. Really, really nice. So that's another sub, you know, it's completely different again, but you've got the three all made from exactly the same core noise. We're just changing the shape of these of these oscillators of the of the of the sine wave. You know, we're changing the amplifier envelope for it to become the 808 or the or the, the straight sort of the straight sub. We're changing the pitch envelope for it to become like a more jungly sort of style. And we could even then incorporate it too. So we could come back to the um, we can come back to the amplifier envelope and we could drop the sustain again. A little bit short, but Really cool. So let's bring that back up. That's a sub. That's a nice sub. Sweet. Uh, so what we can do now is we can now grab literally the whole thing again. And we can now come across and we can 
basically we can now start to play with this again. So this time around, let's not use the sine wave. Let's use like the square wave. And we'll now have to use the filter. Let's turn off the pitch envelope. So let's come to here. So we're just a flat sort of style style noise at this second. If I come to the amplifier envelope, it's got the sustain all the way up. So it's just gonna remain at a constant speed throughout, a constant pitch, uh, constant volume throughout. Doesn't seem like a lot of weight in there to the headphones, but then actually when you look at the scale here on the, on the EQ, we can see there's still the fundamental there and it's still a loud fundamental. So if we now grab the filter and we grab it on a low pass, we can now start to reduce this, like we can bring the cutoff frequency down. And we'll start to get more subby. So we do have a little bit of a problem there in the sense that we've got this filter envelope on. So if I double click on that, we've now got no filter envelope. We'd have to boost the volume on it, but you can hear we've once again created a sub. Up a little bit with the frequency there. And you can hear that it's got like a slight, a slight, a bit more tonality to the sub. So I'm not as keen, let's try the saw wave. We can see again, we've still got that low end there. I just feel, just feel like they sound a bit thin. But let's have a look at the previous one. We'll go to this one, which is just the straight. There you go. That's just got that weight and that, that sort of heaviness with it. We've still got that, that heaviness and that weight. But but we're basically just almost, I feel like we're just trying to recreate that sine wave rather than sort of treating this as a square wave. We're just trying to bring that back so that we've got the same frequencies as the sine wave. You know, we're trying to simplify the, the harmonics out, simplify the noise out so that we've, we're just sort of creating that, that sort of bare minimal, um, low end, you know, because like we don't want it We, I mean, for me, I don't want all this top end information in here. It's going to get in the way of my mid range subs, it's going to get in of my mid range basses, it's going to get in the way of the pads, it's going to get in the way of the bottom end of the vocal or whatever, if you've got a vocal in the tune, like that's, that's absolutely no good to me. So, um, so we can bring that down. And we've got like a, a bit of a sub there. That's quite nice. We can boost the volume a bit more. Oh yeah, there we go. So uh, let's come back to the sine, the sine wave. So you can see that they're, 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 it's six of one and half a dozen of another. The sine wave is more pure. It definitely seems like more of a pure sort of style sub as the square wave seems a bit, a bit rougher, a bit dirtier. So uh, right, let's copy that again. So we'll grab them and we will control copy them onto the next channel. And then what we'll do this time around is we will now turn on oscillator two. We will keep it as a saw wave and we will now have a quick listen to where we're at. They're both running through filter one at this second in time. Okay, so it's boosted the volume. So let's bring the volume back down. Have so a listen to the previous one. So it's it's got a little bit more balls than the, than the previous one. It's still a bit of a nothing for me. So let's just try detuning these very slightly. So let's go 19. Oh, um, sorry, 0 0.19 on the first oscillator. And let's go minus 0 0.19 on the second one. So we should now have that Reese kind of movement happening. There we go. And you can hear now that we've got that bit of movement. It's a lot more interesting and a lot, a lot easier to use now as a sub than the previous one, you know, where it was just a standard, just not a very nice sort of low-pass saw wave. As now, 
you've got that old school sort of style noise, you know? We could try with the pitch bend. And we could even try, let's take that filter up. So it for me starts to sound a little bit thin. And also if I was if I was to have like a a Reese style sort of noise, I'd want the Reese to be wide. I want the bottom end to be really, really mono, but I actually want the Reese to be wide. Which we could do here with the, the utility. We can put bass mono and we could come up to say 250 hertz. So we're losing all of that bottom, that bottom end is just gonna be mono, you know? Uh, and then anything above that is gonna be wide. Frequency up. But I think what I would rather do is I would rather have just the whole thing as mono. And I'd rather have the filter all the way down on this one. And then with the and then duplicate it and I would then have like an uh, no weight in, in another Reese that's opened up, you know? Uh, and I would then just use them as one base. And that would that would totally work. That's quite nice because you're kind of getting that little bit of a bite on that bottom end. So the other thing to note is this, this waver that's going on. So we have a little bit of control over how fast or slow that waver is, depending on how much these two oscillators are detuned. So if I now go, rather than 0 0.19, if I go to um, 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.50 uh, sorry I want to go 0 0.05 is, is actually what I wanted to do there we go uh, and on the this one we'll go minus 0 0.05 and now we're a lot closer together pitch wise and that waver is slowed right down and almost become like phasing now but Nice. So let's manually change this while we're playing the note. And you can see the further away these oscillators become, the more the quicker they waver. So and but that will then, depending on what pitch you're at, that will that will change as well. So badass like proper really 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 cool okay so now that we've made a few of these these uh these subs let's have a quick listen through again see where we're at so the first one was our 808 style uh if i what's happened here oh, i'll put it on the right here we go the right channel which is a deep sub you know it's a deep bass it's it's nice and then we've got our straight uh, sine wave. Nice, really, really cool. And we've then got, uh, what was this one? This was the pitch bend. That's really nice, really, really, really nice. I like that, and I like the riff there and everything. That would just totally work. And we've then got, we've then moved from the, we move away from the sine wave, and we then go to the saw, and this is just a single saw with the filter, with the filter. Which is okay, it's like the ugliest one out of them all. And then we've then doubled that saw wave, and we've, we've detuned it, and we now have Obviously, the further away you get, the faster it gets, but also the more discordant it's going to get. So it's going to sound messier as time as the, as you get further and further apart. The same as playing two notes next to each other, you know, it's it's not going to be it's not going to be the prettiest of sounds. 
but I like 19. 19 for me seems to be um, 0.19. That seems to be like quite a good sort of place for it. Really cool, really cool. Nice. So there we go. I think what we could do now is we could, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll pause the video, I'll get a drum kit in there, and then we can program up a couple of sublines quickly, and we can have a look at processing these further and getting them sitting nicer with, with the drums. So I'll be back in two seconds. Okay, so I grabbed the drum loop. I've imported that in onto the audio channel one. Uh, it's drum loop number eight from my ambient sample series. Uh, it's one of my favorites from those from, from that range of kits. I'll give you a quick play of that. I don't pause the video quickly. Yeah. Really simple, uh, but but nice. So it's going to be an easy one just to, to put a bass line underneath. So we'll start with the 808, and we'll just play the two, and then we'll we'll have a look at it. Sweet. Okay. So what we will do is just have a look at this loop here. I don't know what's going on there. I think the drum loops me on in a bit weird. Okay. Like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's imported it in at the wrong, the wrong speed. So let's grab the drum loop. We'll put it in here for a second and then take that front out. got a setting on the quantize somewhere that's <laughs> messing around with me but anyway here we go so okay let's record something Finest moment of sub bass line plan, but okay. So, first of all, let's just quantize it. So, I think we need 16s here, which we do. So, we'll hit the quantize button and we'll just have a look and see where we're at with everything. Okay, so what we don't want, uh, what I found works better with sub bass is not having any of the notes touching unless you specifically want them touching for like a pitch bend or a glide or something like that. I think that they just they just sound better. You know, you haven't got to have a massive gap in between like these, but just, just a tiny little bit, just so that you've got that bit of breathing space in between. I don't know where it gives it a chance to re-trigger or whatever, like that one there is perfect. So you see, I've just taken the, the point back so that you're not touching those, those two parts there. Uh, so we come along and we'll do the same thing. Let's grab these. And we'll not so much that one, but we'll grab that one. So anything that's touching, we'll just grab uh, that one, that one, that one, and then we can just literally grab the end and we'll just just shorten that a touch. I don't want it to be crazy short, but that'll do. And now that should just clean up the sound of that 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 sub. So if we now crop the clip, so we've only got that bit that we played in it. Um, let's have a look here. I'm not convinced that's in the right place. Let's do that. Let's do that. That's fine. Right, let's just give it a play. Okay, so here we've got another one that's touching. So I just want to zoom into this and just take that end point just in a touch. We'll just sit a bit more naturally. It's 
Foi. Feeling here that 808 sort of style. Nice, you can hear how that kind of works. Let's get rid of this. Let's start again with it. And let's see what we're at. Okay, let's try something like that. That'd be more 8080. So it's a, more of an 808 style bass line. Right, let's go eights this time. Let's quantize that. And we can see that we're sort of legato on all of it. So we'll grab those. That one. That one. Oh, we can grab all of these. There we go. So I can just grab the very end. Let's zoom in a little bit, make our lives a bit easier. And I can just take that in. With the 808 sort of style style sub, I don't know if I would add a side chain to that one. I think with the 808, it kind of wants to be very upfront, very prominent, you know. Um, and there's not a lot of weight in that bass drum, so so it's it's kind of safe in that sense. Um, so yeah, so that was that's my 808 sort of style bass line. If you see what I'm saying, if you listen to that game. Nice. So what we can do now is we can just turn that one off and we can now come to the next one in the in the series. And this was just the flat analog sub, which I, I love. So this one now I can show you will cause us more problems with the drums. Um, so let's just give that a play. Uh, we've muted off the other one. Yep. You can hear now if I just hold that note. It's not helping the drums. I understand that the mix is probably a little bit all over the place. So I could possibly bring down the level on it. But there's still a fight going on for me. You know, it's still a fight. There's something about it that's not completely natural. There's something about it that's just not, doesn't seem to sit quite well. So what we will do is I will now grab, I'll go to the audio effects and I'll grab a side chain dynamics and we'll grab a compressor which is the side chain and I'll put this before this other compressor here. Um, in fact I'm not going to turn it. I'm going to put it after that compressor. So we compress, everything gets compressed and then it comes into the side chain uh, which we're then going to side chain to the drums and we're going to make sure that this EQ button is turned on and the low pass so that we're basically we're telling it what frequency to respond to. So it's not going to be responding to the hi-hats. There's no need. There's no need for the sub to be ducking for the hi-hats. That's not what we need. We want the sub to, for, for me anyway, I want the sub to duck between the, the, the snare and the bass drum so that everything, those two remain like the main focus, the solidness. Um, so yeah, so I basically have set that up. So we're now, so we're basically, we're, we're looking for a, a signal between zero hertz and 169 hertz. So we could come up a touch, so let's go 250. So we should start to get the bottom of that snare, providing the snare is not too, too top endy. But, um, but one, we're not gonna include any of those hi-hats in the side chain. So we can now check out, see how that sounds. Sorry, I have to hold the note. And we've got movement now. So we could even try dropping this a little bit more. And you can see now that you can now hold that straight long note and the drums are still breathing over the top of it. Um, super cool, super cool. And, and when it comes to mixing down that, that 
just makes life so much easier. I mean, that's a heavy side chain, so there's no, there's no, there's no real need to have it that heavy. Um, I'm just showing you for the sake of it, of, of showing you. Do you see what I'm saying? So. Yeah, so you can see that that, that side chain just helps us out there. So let's record that in. Let's quantize that up. So we are talking eighth notes here. Get the quantiles. Once again, we don't want them. Okay, I'll play it with them joined together. Let's solo that for a second. Yeah, you can hear that. That's just not nice. So let's just grab, let's zoom in, grab the end of any one of the highlighted notes, and let's just do that. So undo it. Can hear it just causes that sort of overlap sort ofness and it's not it's not nice so i mean there's no release on there so so there's no excuse in that sense you know um so yeah so anyway now that we've done that that little bit of space in between let's check it out let's hear it with the drums There you go. So you can see very, very simple, but that kind of works in just a very different way to that first one, which was a lot more 808 sort of style. So if I That'd be nice sort of hit just before this. Dum, dum, dum. So we go there. You can see that's left that gap there already. I just want to bring that back a touch. Nice. So we could then duplicate that again. So I grab those two and I just, oh, there we go. There we go. I'll just put it over the top of that one. Then we, it just gives us that gap. Nice. So you can hear that it's just got that 808 sort of style feel. Come back to this one. Running. Proper driving that along, you know? Nice. So let's try the next one. So let's turn that one off. Nice. Okay, so let's just give it a play. I would probably be inclined to sort of incorporate these these two these two together so I could possibly have like a in fact we could just do that so if I just record in here we go in the right place here we go let's just select them all Nice. So we can now, if I just expand this out, we can now just literally, I mean, we could quantize this first. That'd be a, a good point to start, really. Quantize. So we are all good. Okay. Fine. 
so sorry if I come back to this one now I know that I can now grab this to here and I can just mute that off I can grab this one do the same thing again mute that off I can grab from here across to here mute that off grab that mute that off and that's that should be all of it yeah there is so we can now unmute this one so start at the beginning Mix needs a little look at, but so we could also grab the side chain and we could duplicate that onto this this next one as well. Put that after this compressor. Here we go, uh, and we could possibly release some of this so that it's not quite as not quite as hard as the as the other one. You know. definitely makes a difference so let's nice so really 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 simple but you can now see how having those two different bases but with the same oscillator that's now sort of joining them together you know they, they can sort of breathe together and they can sort of they can talk to each other they can they can answer each other and it's it's really 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 cool um okay so let's mute them off let's have a look at the next one turn the thing on okay So it's, it's now choosing the right sort of lines for the sub. So let's have a little look. Awful, awful bass line but we can go with it for a second. It's purely just so that we can, we can have a look and just hear how the different subs sound with the, with the drums and how we process them. Uh, that's what it's about. So we can go to eighth notes here and we can quantize that. Lovely. Uh, we could just grab the end of one of these and just take the end point in. Okay, so that one doesn't sound quite so nice with that much gap in between. So this is where we need to be a little bit more careful and we can now bring this out a touch. So this wants to join you now with that little tiny gap there. Let's just duplicate that across, there we go. Uh, control A and then we'll take the selection to there. Okay, and what we are going to need to do is sidechain that because it's ugly. So let's grab the sidechain, let's go to this channel here and let's put the sidechain back on. You can see how that side chain has actually added something and made the bass made the bass line better with regards to it being more rhythmical. Um, it's still the same bass line. It's still a, a, like a bit of a rubbish line, um, also known as like a turd line as it was. But um, but yeah, with that side chain, that's just added a little bit of movement with it. too much. We could always bring the dry wet back a touch. And this is all personal preference. So it's however you want your stuff to sound. I just happen to know that this works for me, this doesn't work for me. You, know, you do something 10,000 times, you, you, you get to know that actually, yeah, I, I can just go there and that's fine. Um, so this is all just experimenting and playing and, and experimenting some more and try this and try that and, you know, just keep going, keep going. Okay, 
So before the video ends up getting too much longer, let's have a quick look at this last one here. Wicked, we've now got this Reesey style sub. So let's have a, let's just play it and let's have a look. this race with this sub because of the way it's it's kind of more Reesey than 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 the others we could possibly go for like a um, like the glide so we can turn the glide on uh, with 50% of the minute okay and what we need to do is just make sure now that these notes are doing the opposite to what they were doing before where we didn't want them touching we now need them to touch so I still want the phrasing in there but we're gonna overlap these first few just a touch there we go okay so we just need to have a quick look here and I think it's this legato setting I want on yeah. come out to here So we lose that hit every time the new note triggers, which is which is wicked. So that sounds like more natural now, you know? So we can do that with these, we could do it with, okay, we could do it with all of these here and we could do it with this one here. So let's just drag that out a touch. and we could extend that out a touch more. All right, let's come back to here. Let's have a little look at the, see if we put a side chain on it. Let's copy this side chain and we'll go back to this channel now and we'll put it after the compressor. And sorry, uh, but one of the things I really love about the side chain, especially with these Reese style subs, is I can I can smash it into that side chain so that it's proper ducking, but then I can boost the volume so that the Reese is like loud against the drums. You know, I like that a lot. So we'll just go back over quick what we've got here. So if I solo, uh, let's turn the, we'll just put turn them on and turn them off as we're looping. So the very first one here, the 808 style, style line. Okay, so these two I edited in nice, so these two go together. This one. Not my favorite. Nice. So very, very, very quickly, just to end this off, what we'll do now is we will now turn that off. We'll grab Ceramin. So let me go to my um, let me go to my plugins, which I've got here. I need to come down. I've got Serum here. So let me put this on here. Let's come back to the audio effects and let's just check this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
super cool that is. So I haven't I did. Bear me two seconds. There we go. Um, sweet. Okay, so we've got serum open, and so what we're going to do now is we're just going to grab the default. I mean, there's a couple of ways you can go about making subs in serum, and I should imagine this is pretty much the same in Vital or pretty much any any VST instrument that you're using. And you can literally just turn off oscillator A and turn on the sub, and then you have a sub. exactly the same as the others and at the moment it's on a sine you can see there it's on the sine wave so we can change that and you can hear that you get a bit more body in the, in the sound and we can go again so we're now on a triangle we're now on a sawtooth and we've got a square and then we've got like a pulse wavy sort of square so the the first two are amazing Quite like that because it's quite dirty it's got like that almost like a sort of tape sort of hissy sort of feel about it as that's just pure but we don't have to go that way i mean that's a real simple easy way of making a good sub um you still process it exactly the same so we'll still grab like a, a utility and we'll set that to mono and we'll grab like an eq in fact what we'll do is we'll just copy excuse that out of the way for a second but we can just come back to here let's get rid of that utility and we'll just copy these settings across. It's a sub, they're the same settings. So copy, and we'll go to here, and we'll paste them there. So that way then we've got exactly the same settings. We're gonna to need to look at the volume on this because I think this is gonna come out a bit loud. Here we go. Or not at all. Uh, what happened to my noise? So if I turn off. An oscillator. Idiot. Anyway, <laughs> so um, so if I turn off the oscillator and I come back to the sub, we can now hear that we've now processed. We've now got our processed sub. Turn these on. There we go. And you can see this the same settings work exactly the same for for this sub as they did the other sub. It's the same sound. It's still only a sine wave, you know. Yes, it's out of Serum. Yes, the other one's out of Analog, but the sine wave out of my Akai is, is, you know, pretty much exactly the same as the sine wave in my Neutron. I mean, there might be slight discrepancies between them, you know, but, but you know, it is what it is in that sense. They, they're pretty much the same thing. So there's, there's the, the standard sine sort of style sub in zero so what we'll do is we'll turn it off we'll turn on oscillator a and then basically what we can do is come down to the analog um is it analog yeah we want to go to the analog table and then we can then go like basic shapes or we can go basic mg but if we go basic shapes there we go there's our sign again exactly the same noise so what we could do is we could we could now because we're at the minute we're on poly, uh, polyphony so we can turn that to mono Got almost corn like the band corn sort of style feel about it that did uh, so we can turn the volume down here well that is too much output there we go and we can have a look so let's let's try maybe putting two signs here so let's come to the same one analog and we'll go basic shapes and then what we'll do is we'll detune these so we'll go minus yeah, look, minus 23 this one we'll go plus Go. Okay, so we don't really hear anything there. Which is kind of strange to me, if I'm totally honest. But let's try the blend mode. Let's turn that down. Oh, I'm doing the wrong detune, which is why. Um, I'm not unison in it. I am. I want to come to here. So this up here is my fine. So let's go 19. I'm down 19. we now have that wave. The same as we did kind of thing with the Reese. Um, not as nice, in my opinion, I don't think it's as nice. So we could then change the wavetable position and we can bring that to the sawtooth. We could do the same with this side. And we're back to where we were with the Reese. 
So you see, it's just the same methods over and over and over and over and over again. So, so yeah, so it's definitely worth a look at. It's definitely worth sort of experimenting with. Um, there is nothing complicated to, to sub work for me. It, there really isn't. You know, it, it's it's a very basic um, science. Do you know what I mean? It's a very basic science. So, so yeah, so I would I would definitely spend some time learn about just what what works well you know what works well put any sound in and take the low pass filter all the way down and see what happens you know um you've got nothing to lose nothing to lose but a bit of time but anyway i'm gonna leave that there we're coming up for just under an hour i hope that was insightful and helpful as per always and i hope it's just given you a bit of a, an insight as to how i work with subs how um how they work for me um, not against me um, and also a few different types of subs you know you can now go and make a jungle tune you know with those subs you know you can make a grime tune with those subs a sub is a sub is a sub if you add a bit of dis distortion to that 808 style one it's going to become like a distorted 808 you know it's it's the core noise is the same so anyway much love. Go check out the member section. Um, they are getting all of these videos early. Um, we've got a few really good things going on over there now, and, and it's and it's active. It's super active, and I, I'm super grateful. So yeah, big up, big up, you guys. Thank you very much for joining, and thanks for being part of this. And um, yeah, I hope to see you in the member section, and I'll catch you in the next video. Much love. Big up. Peace out. <laughs>